I've got an idea. It might work. Could I leave this poster with you? It's for Miss Jordan. Of course, no problem. I'll put it in her box and give it to her at the earliest opportunity. That's very kind. Thank you. Oh, my pleasure. That's what I'm here for. Is there anything else I can do for you? No, not at the moment. Then will you please excuse me? I have something important to attend to. It is clearly too high to see over or jump over. The safe deposit boxes are reflected in the CD. If the porter really did put the poster in the right box, then Katharina Jordan must be in cabin number two. Hello, do you remember me? Uh, of course. You are... You are... Ms. Nina Kalinko. I, I knew it. It was on the tip of my tongue. Oh no. Okay, all I have to do now is put on a slightly stupid expression, then I could easily pass as her twin sister. Hello. Hello, Ms. Jordan? Hey, not bad. I'd like my room key. That's number two. Yes, of course. Uh, it's right here at the front. Here you go. Thank you. I'll change back again. I assume the captain can use the loudspeaker to inform the passengers if the ship has just sunk. If I hadn't seen the owner, I'd say her clothes identify her as a typical bimbo. But since I already know the lady, I know for a fact that she's a typical bimbo. These clothes really aren't to my taste. TV inspectors would probably find dozens of pieces of evidence in this bed, but I can't see anything out of the ordinary. I'll just have another quick look. Yes, it's definitely mine. I'll be interested to hear what the Honorable Ms. Jordan has to say in her defense. It'd be easier to find the needle in a haystack, but what else can I do? Let's hear what the others think. It's me. No, that's why I'm calling. I've searched half the ship, and I still haven't found anything. I'm well aware of that, but further problems have arisen. Yeah, I hope so too. We're running out of time, and we're going to need a small miracle to ensure the whole thing doesn't end in a huge catastrophe. Okay, I'll get back to you as soon as I have any news. Phew, that was close. Who was that? And what was he looking for? A passenger? Or a member of the crew? And what is this disaster he keeps talking about? I should really be careful who I talk to and about what. I can't really trust anyone, with the exception of little Oscar, perhaps.
Why do cabins like this always seem to be furnished by colorblind interior decorators? My handbag! Looks like everything is still here. The magazine looks like complete garbage, but it has George Rooney on the cover. That's a good enough reason to buy it. If I fold the cover correctly, you can't see the text anymore. Now, you could almost mistake it for a real photo. As if George Rooney would ever board a ship like this. But some people will believe that sugar-free cream cakes won't make them fat, so... Hello, do you remember me? Uh, of course. You are... You are... Ms... Nina Kalinkov. I, I knew it. It was on the tip of my tongue. I'll know it next time around. I promise. He's playing so peacefully and not even with my things for a change. I'd like to keep it that way so I won't disturb him and put stupid ideas in his head. Miss Jordan, I need to have a serious word with you. I wouldn't know what about. About my handbag, which I found in your cabin. You, you've been in my cabin? That's a breaking. I'll have you sent to jail. Hmm. Do you really want us to go to the captain and settle matters there? Okay. You're right. Let me explain myself. I'm listening. Just a minute. Uh, first I need a drink to get over the shock. You can have one, but then I want to know what's going on here. What would you like to drink? Gin and tonic? A Bloody Mary. I only drink Bloody Marys. No problem. Coming right up. See? We're both still alive. You just keep on joking. You'll have that smile wiped off your face soon. Just you wait and see. I'd like a Bloody Mary. Do you think drinking alcohol at this early hour will help you forget the miseries of this world? What? I thought you were a barkeeper. Well, of course you're welcome to have a cocktail, but... Great. We'll just get on with it then. Just one moment. Just a second. Maybe I should have ordered one myself. Some of the people on board are difficult to bear when you're sober. There you go. But please, remember my words. Yes, I'll do that. As soon as the great flood comes and we're up to our neck in water. Maybe he should be paying more attention to his drinks. A Bloody Mary in this kind of glass? Either he's out to annoy me, or he doesn't know the first thing about cocktails. I'll go find myself a safe spot, just in case the end of the world suddenly dawns on us. You are Miss Jordan. Here's your cocktail. Thank you. So, what have you got to say? Okay, what I'm about to tell you may sound a bit strange, but it really happened. Just get on with your story, and we'll see what seems reasonably believable and what doesn't. Fine. I passed your cabin last night. The door was ajar, and I was just curious, that's all. I peeked through the gap and saw a masked man searching through your luggage. He must have noticed me somehow because he turned around suddenly and dragged me into the cabin. He pushed me up against the wall. His hand was at my throat. I hardly dared to breathe. I don't know how long I stood there, but 
It felt like an eternity. The masked man probably didn't know what exactly he should do next either. Then I heard soft footsteps in the corridor, approaching the cabin. For a moment I thought maybe... Maybe I should cry for help. And then suddenly, there was this gun before my eyes. The man hissed. Shut up or I'll kill you. I was numb with fear. And even when he let go of me and slammed the door on you, I didn't dare move. A moment later, the man was standing behind me again. And he whispered in my ear, If you tell anyone that you saw me here, you're dead. Now, go to the ship's doctor and tell him the woman took an awkward fall and hit her head against the door. <laughs> and remember, whatever you do, I'll be watching you closely. <laughs> what was I supposed to do? Are you okay? You've gone pale. I... Uh, <laughs> no idea. I, I'm sure it will go away again just as suddenly as it came. A Bloody Mary always helps. That's much better. <laughs> handbag on my table. I was scared because I suddenly realized that this man could enter my cabin anytime he wanted. I swear I haven't <laughs> touched the handbag every time <laughs> I looked at it, it. It sent shivers down my spine. I don't know. I've heard more convincing stories. On the other hand, you must be a really good actress if the panic in your eyes isn't genuine. Did you recognize the man? Uh, <laughs> you don't look as if you're any better. Do you want me to call a doctor? I can't really breathe properly. Anyway, the guy... <laughs> I'm not quite sure, but... <laughs> he reminded me of... <laughs> Miss Jordan? Miss Jordan, are you okay? Oh, no! She suddenly started coughing terribly. It got worse and worse until she could hardly breathe. The doc will put her right. Don't you worry. But I do. This was meant to be a relaxing cruise, but I'm about as far away from that as I am from Hawaii. I should have a lie down for an hour or two. My headache from the incident with the door is getting worse. I should head for the restaurant now. I wonder what that mysterious passenger from cabin number five will be able to tell me about the strange goings on aboard this ship. First, he wants to see me and tell me some vitally important news regarding the incidents on the ship. And now he's not here. Men. So I'll give him another five minutes. After that, it's his bad luck. Did someone just fall overboard? I hope I'm mistaken. I must have been mistaken. Who could have, and if not, what if there really is somebody out there floating in the sea? I will tell the captain just to be sure. He'll know what to do. And you're positive that somebody fell overboard? Yes, well, you know, it was like this. I was just sitting in the restaurant, waiting for somebody. And suddenly I heard voices. That's not unusual at sea. Never heard of the ship's kobold? I'm serious. There were these two men and they were fighting. Well, at least I saw two shadows and got the impression that they were fighting each other. Then there was a loud splash, as if one of them had fallen into the water and I could see only one shadow after that. You really think someone was thrown overboard? It looked like it, at least. Did you recognize these men? No, I only know that one of them had a long ponytail. At first I thought it was a woman, but the figure looked more like that of a man. The guy with the ponytail suddenly disappeared after the loud splash. Hmm, there's only one person on board who has a ponytail, our ship's doctor. I find it hard to believe what you've just told me, but it can't hurt to have a look together. The doctor should still be in the sick bay with Miss Jordan. Thank you. See? Everything's fine. Our ship's doctor is taking great care of his patient. You think I'm crazy, don't you? 
I was sure that there was a fight and that one of them went overboard. No, I don't think you're crazy. It was dark and these things do happen. Just lie down and sleep for a few hours. Actually... I need to return to the bridge now. Good night. Yes, thank you. Same to you. Strange. Did I really just imagine it? Oh well. While I'm busy making a fool of myself, I might as well go and check whether my date has finally shown up. Just wait. I'll have something to say to him tomorrow. But I've had enough for today. I'm going to bed now. Well, now I'm reasonably well-rested and definitely fit enough to give someone who didn't show up for dinner a good talking to. But I just heard very distinct noises. Looks like that coward doesn't dare leave his cabin. Is he only afraid of being yelled at or does he really have something to hide? Maybe I should go to the lower deck and look through the porthole of his cabin. What's the doctor doing in this cabin? And is he really the doctor? And if he is, why is he wearing a wig? But even more important, who is treating Katerina Jordan? I really need to check up on her. What's the doctor doing in But even... Hello, Mr. Lee. Hello, Miss Kalenkov. Are you on board simply to relax? I have the same strategy as you. I like to combine business with pleasure. I'm on my way to a conference of the IADSES. May I ask? Of course. The International Association of the Discoverers of Stars in Everyday Situations. Uh, come again? Virtually every magazine has sensational shots of stars in extremely embarrassing situations. Yes, <laughs> you can't really miss them. We are also on the hunt for photos of famous people, but we don't climb trees and we don't creep through sewers. We have a code of honor. I see. For us, it's all about catching the star in a completely everyday situation in public. For example, when they are shopping in the supermarket, or driving, or going for a walk. Sounds... interesting. I always thought the Chinese couldn't pronounce ours properly. And I always thought Russians spent the whole day drinking vodka. You can't beat good old cliches and prejudices. That's a fine collection of cameras you have there. Aren't they pretty heavy? Yes, they are. But I was once lucky enough to meet Gina Turner at a car dealer's. I nearly wept for joy. And then the camera didn't work. Didn't have a clue why, it just didn't work. I never really recovered from that trauma. Understandable. Well, since then, I always have at least three different cameras with me, so that something like that can never happen again. You seem completely fascinated by the photos. To be honest, my fascination does have very definite boundaries. I only find the unknown beauty under the birch tree really fascinating. However, she does not seem to be a star, at least not yet. But perhaps that will change one day. Everyone started in a small way, you know. My first star was Sophia Lorraine, who accidentally spent too much time standing over a ventilation shaft during the opening of a department store. Unfortunately, it turned out that it wasn't Sophia Lorraine at all, but just a double. And it was no accident, but deliberately planned that way by the department store owner. Nevertheless, that was what started my passion for star photography. And the photos on the wall can't even keep up with the Sophia Lorraine double? Not yet. But I haven't looked at all the photos yet. Maybe one of them is a real hit. However, I realize I've become quite spoiled in this respect. Only real stars excite me now, and they probably wouldn't be seen dead on this kind of ship. Who knows? Miracles happen. You're right there. You usually bump into stars where you least expect them. For example, I once met a senator in the ladies' room. It was very embarrassing for him. I can well imagine. But what were you doing in the ladies' room yourself? Uh, oh, that's a long story that you probably wouldn't understand. 
No, probably not. I'll let you know if I bump into any stars on the way. Oh, that would be nice. As if George Rooney would ever... Why are you working as a barkeeper now? Didn't you have enough work to do as a porter? Yes, more than enough. But what am I supposed to do? Special circumstances require special measures. You're telling me. Where's your colleague? That's a very good question, which I have already asked myself. When I see him next, he'd better dress up warm. The question is, does the barkeeper's disappearance mean he had something to do with yesterday's events? And if so, is he the victim or the perpetrator? I must keep my eyes peeled and my ears to the ground to make sure I don't become the next person everyone worries about. For how long has little Oscar been drumming already? It seems like forever, but that's probably just my impression. Yes, probably. Can't you persuade him to take a short break, or a long one? I've already tried that, and it turned out to be a serious mistake. The kid would probably have stopped a long time ago if he didn't know how much he's annoying me. And you put up with that? He is the captain's son. I see. But maybe you can do it. I'd be eternally grateful. I won't promise anything, but I can try. Is it worth opening the bar? There's not really much happening here. To be precise, there's nothing at all happening here. But that's no wonder with that racket going on. Who wants to listen to hours of arrhythmic drumming if they can avoid it? But as long as there are no other guests here, I can at least escape the noise with my MP3 player. I'm leaving now for a while. If I bump into the barkeeper while I'm gone, I'll send him to you, okay? I would be very grateful to you. Nice drums you've got there. They're bongos. Oh, sorry. How could I? No problem. You're making a terrible racket with those things. Can't you occupy yourself some other way? Sure. No problem. How? Well, how about playing ping pong, for example? I've already played that. But uh, the last ball fell into the sea. Oh. Well, what about swimming? No. That's really boring. Yes, well, what about reading? Even more boring. I can see it won't be easy to persuade you to stop drumming. Right, that won't be easy. Don't worry, I'll think of something. Well, now I'm really curious. Cheeky kid. I like him, but it's difficult to look past that cheeky kid label. The barkeeper told me you scared off all the guests with your racket. Don't you think it's time you stopped that now? No. You can accuse him of a lot of things, but at least he stands by his opinion, loud and clear. Okay then, I'll leave you and this deck to this terrible noise. Yeah! I had actually imagined that I would be spending the crossing lounging in a deck chair. Instead of that, I'm having to deal with all kinds of incredible problems.
Hello. What can I do for you? Does your doctor wear a wig? Not that I know of. Why? He's in a passenger's cabin at the moment, and he's definitely wearing a wig. Look, I don't want to get personal, but you seem to have experienced a number of strange things here on board. Exchange suitcases, disappearing handbags, doctors who went overboard. What are you saying? I'm not saying anything, but please understand, I've really got enough to do on this ship without taking care of the passengers' entertainment program. Well... Now just go and find yourself a nice deck chair and enjoy the journey. But... Do I really look like some bored bimbo who just makes all this stuff up in order to grab the limelight? It seems I do. So I need proof. Okay. So I'll get some. I'll let you get back to work. Thank you. Hello, Mr. Lee. Hello, Miss Kalenkov. Could I possibly borrow one of your cameras? I'm sorry, but I never lend them out. Since that time with Gina Turner. Yeah, I get it. But it would only be very briefly. The Polaroid will do, and it really is very important. I'm sorry, but if a star should suddenly turn up here for whatever reason, and my other cameras weren't working, and the star left the ship before you returned with the camera, don't you think the likelihood of that scenario actually taking place is much lower than the risk of being struck here and now by a coconut? You would be surprised how many people. All right, I can see that you can't be convinced with words. Do you know that George Rooney is on board? Yes, of course. He's sharing a cabin with the Pope. Don't you believe me? Of course not. He wouldn't board a ship like this if you paid him for it. I wouldn't be so sure. Haven't you seen the photo on the wall yet? What photo? Come with me, I'll show you. Here. That... that would be a sensation. That would be too good to be true. But what would he be doing here? No, it can't be. You just want to annoy me. If George Rooney was on board, I would have noticed a long time ago. And you'd hardly be seeing him alone without bodyguards. He's traveling in disguise, of course. That goes without saying. And why should he do that? He could buy a much nicer and larger ship any time. He still has his doubts, but with a bit of convincing, I could persuade him to take a photo of that false doctor. Then I would have proof that something here isn't quite right. There's this new series called, uh, Emergency Boat. That's why Mr. Rooney has to spend a week on a small boat disguised as a doctor. It's really the only way he can see what the working day of a ship's doctor is like, so he can play the role perfectly. Sounds logical, but it seems too good to be true. Just come with me. I even know which cabin he's in. I can hardly see anything. Is that really supposed to be George Rooney? That's what I said. You can take your photo now. It'll make you a star among the professional paparazzi. But I want a copy, too. That doesn't help me at all. There'd be nothing to see on the photo except his back. He's right there. I'll have to find some way of making sure there's more of him to see. with the wig is in there. No matter whether he really is the ship's doctor or not, he's got something to hide. I need to convince the captain that there is something really fishy going on here. The porter is behind the bar at the moment. 
I should make the most of the opportunity. What shall we do with a drunken sailor? What shall we do with a drunken sailor? What shall we do with a drunken sailor? Early in the morning. Put him in the longboat till he's sober. Put him in the longboat till he's sober. Put him in the longboat till he's sober. Early in the morning. Hello, Mr. Lee. Hello, Miss Kalenkov. Do you think you could stand at the window so that you can see more of George Rooney on the photo? No. If he doesn't change his sitting position, the picture is worth nothing to me. I somehow need to arrange for the guy to sit somewhere else. I'll let you know if I bump into any stars on the way. Well, that would be nice. That doesn't appear to make sense at the moment. Max didn't think base... Hello, I... Hello, pretty lady. What a piece of luck meeting you here. Have you taken part in our fantastic prize draw yet? Uh, no. Not that I know of. Well, then it's high time you did. Otherwise, you'll miss out on our great prizes. And what are they? Oh, I haven't properly introduced myself. You probably already know that my name is Fleming Olsen, right? No, but what's in a name? I can remember you clearly anyway. Hey, <laughs> great. I leave a lasting impression on most people. Once they meet me, they don't forget me so quickly. Yes, you can say that again. There's something I'm sure you didn't know. I work for Rain Cloud Travels, the largest and most popular travel agency in Europe. I see. Like we organize coach trips to all kinds of destinations, imaginable and unimaginable. You choose one and we'll take you there. But not just like that. Our luxury coaches will ensure that you arrive at your destination relaxed and well rested and... Great. What about the prize draw then? Oh yeah, I almost forgot. Even after so many years, I still get all worked up when I think of all the great possibilities we offer our customers. They include, for example... How does the prize draw work? What exactly can I win? And how? I'm glad you asked. On the table, you can see a few landmarks from the destinations that we at Rain Cloud Travels offer tours to. Anyone who wants to take part has to build a model of one of these landmarks for a chance to experience an unbelievable, unforgettable journey. Yes, I know some people who have traveled with this company and will probably never be able to forget it for the rest of their lives. As I said, some passengers have already participated, so not all cities are available. But the selection is still quite good. Got Paris, London, uh, Brussels, and Vienna. Just choose which landmark you want to build a model of. And then I can win a trip? A journey from our stunning range will be raffled amongst all the participants. And if I win, can I choose where I want to go? You don't have to worry about a thing. We practically pick you up at your front door and take you to your hotel. Of course, the excursions are free of charge as well. But you didn't answer my question. Can I choose my destination? We'll do that for you too. Just build a model of one of the remaining landmarks and you will get a numbered lottery ball from me. All participants will bring their lottery balls with them to the next port, where I will personally draw the lucky winner of a fantastic trip. I'm off now for a while. Oh, what a shame. 
but you can come back any time. I always enjoy charming company. Yes, I would enjoy that too. Something is still missing, otherwise the assortment doesn't really make sense. My ticket for a potential dream journey. I'll build a model of the Atomium. Even complete modeling amateurs like me can do that. If that doesn't win me a prize, I don't know what will. Here is my contribution. Can I win this great trip now? The Atomium. Well, you really have chosen the easiest of all possible landmarks. Hey, don't put my work down. I went to a lot of trouble making it. All right, this type of contribution also has a chance of winning our great journey. Here, please bring this ball to the prize draw in the next port. And with a bit of luck... I'll soon be sitting in a coach full of people with smelly feet and screaming kids. I'm already looking forward to it. You don't have to win the trip if you don't want to. Yes, I do. Sorry, I'm just not feeling too good right now. This was meant to be a vacation already, but maybe I'll have more luck next time around. So much for that gorgeous weather. Something's definitely brewing up there.